All right, everybody, welcome back. So with the December update right around the corner, we should be getting dead blogs and teaser next week. I thought it'd be a great time to go ahead and cover a top tier jet that I haven't covered in a very long time, which is most likely not really going to have a spot in the meta next patch. That, of course, is the F-14B. Now, this hasn't received nearly the amount of attention or the time in the spotlight that the F-14A did on release. And to be honest, I think that's kind of a shame because it basically took everything that was necessarily a downside about the F-14A and made it better. For us War Thunder players, of course, one of the biggest things is flight performance. And the F-14B really just takes care of the downsides they had with the F-14A. Now, the F-14A was always a good dogfighter. For quite a while, it was the best dogfighter in the game. I mean, stuff like the J7E could put up a fight, but a competent F-14A pilot could beat pretty much everything. Now, that changed when the MiG-29 and the F-16 came, and to a degree, the M2K could also keep up before that. And always, the biggest problem the F-14A had was its low-speed acceleration. The F-14B fixes that. Its new engines give it drastically improved thrust, especially up to Mach. Once you get past Mach, the TF-30 start to take over. I'm going to pop up the thrust charts on screen right here just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But for actual War Thunder engagements, and especially dogfights, the F-14B has much, much better engines. They're also a little bit cooler as well, which definitely helps whenever you're trying to flare something. Speaking of, the F-14B also carries up to 700 flares. And by the way, I'd like to keep, you know, keep an eye on something. I'm going to get three kills stolen by the same guy in this engagement, so just, just keep an eye on the kill feed. I was pretty mad about it. Regardless, uh, with this loadout right here, I get 700 countermeasures. That is as much as the Harrier GR7, and it's an absolutely ridiculous amount, and it's super helpful in this IRCCM environment. Now, it doesn't really help against R73s and Magic 2s because they just kind of ignore your flares, but it really, really helps with the AIM-9M because of the way you have to flare the missile. For those of y'all who don't know how the AIM-9M Seeker head works, it's not like the R73 where it just shrinks down and makes it basically impossible for it to see flares at close range. What it does instead is it goes ahead and it just basically shuts off its seeker head whenever it sees flares for up to two seconds, depending on how long the flares are in its field of vision. So if you can just spam flares, it'll either completely freak the missile out or you're able to change directions while the missile is not looking at you and you don't have to worry about that AIM-9M tracking through your flares. Speaking of, the F-14B should at some point get aim on m It did use them in real life. Uh, we actually have technically a later F-14B than the F-14D right now. And both of those, if we ever get the F-14D, should have the aim on m So we'll have to see what guys and decides. I hope they don't pull the ha ha ha, you have to grind the F-14D to get aim on m but they very well may do that. Now, many of y'all may be wondering why I don't normally run Phoenixes. Now, I am running them in this game. And I do run them periodically because I find it really fun. They're kind of like a little mini game at the beginning of the match. You know, you just ripple fire off two or four of them. Please don't run six, I beg of you. But you just ripple off a few of them. You know, you got them in on your TWS until they get close enough for you to break off. And then you just kind of see you know, where it goes from there. You might get a couple kills like I got right here, you know, and it's really fun. Most of the time, they aren't going to be hitting people. I got super lucky right here getting three right off the bat. Technically two in assist because one of them only crit, but you get the point. It's not as if they're completely unmaneuverable. I mean, look at this one. It actually pulls a pretty hard turn to hit this dude. It's just that in most engagement, it's not going to be doing that. I got incredibly lucky there. This is not an anti-fighter missile. It was designed to be able to hit fighters, sure, but not like the AMRAM, for example, that was designed to be able to hit targets maneuvering at 9 or 10 Gs, right? It's going to hit people that are either aren't aware or aren't actively avoiding it. So basically, you just don't want to rely on this as an anti-fighter missile. And if you're going to be trying to go full meta, just running a full kit of Sparrows is your best bet. Either four or six, depending on how many countermeasures you want. Personally, I would recommend running more Sidewinders right now, just because everybody's flying low. So your radar missiles aren't going to be hitting anyways. And the aim l is still a very competent missile. Now, it's not a 9M. But it does still ignore Flare's close rear aspect, and it's arguably better at close range than the aim 9 m because it can't be spoofed by it was just a bunch of Flare's being popped. Those rise time changes will just make it completely ignore them. So for me at least, the combination of good flight performance, plus 4 aim 9 ls plus 4 Sparrows, and then 700 countermeasures makes this thing a pretty viable top tier, 
Although it's, of course, not a MiG-29G. It's not an F-16C. It's still going to lose against both of those. I think it might be able to win a dogfight against an SMT, but it'll probably just get R-73 before it can do that anyways. It's just an all-around decent jet, especially since 12.0 does get some down tier sometimes. And so if you really want to run your Phoenixes, you can always run them and maybe, maybe you'll get lucky and get to beam a tornado out of the sky or something. The AUG-9 is definitely not the best radar on top tier anymore, but it's more than enough for most engagements, especially because you get the ability to switch lock types, just like the F-16 did recently. So you can see he was noshing me and I just go ahead and switch to normal pulse mode. Now he's too low right here, so I'm just not going to get the lock regardless, which is why I got, you know, kind of messed up right there. Unfortunately, that just plays more into everybody flying low like I was talking about earlier. It really makes radar missiles a lot less effective than they used to be. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this thing can and will rip its wings if you're not careful, especially with the combat flaps out. It'll pull hard, but it rips at like 12 or 13 Gs now. It used to pull 15. They finally corrected it. And unfortunately, I'm not really going to be able to regain control here, even though I went ahead and did split throttle. Tom Cruise failed me, unfortunately. Moving on away from Air RB, of course, uh, this is also known as the Bomb Cat. It did get overshadowed by the F-16C incredibly quickly, but as it is right now, it does still have a pretty decent kit. I mean, you get a thermal pod and you get four laser guided bombs. And as you can see right here, I'm sitting here six or seven kilometers up in the air, lasing this dude 10 kilometers away. You do have to be careful because these GBUs do have a tendency to overshoot. Uh, so you want to make sure you drop the bomb directly on whatever your laser is. And personally, I wouldn't actually recommend locking onto the target with your activate target point command. You can, of course, always do that. And if they're just by themselves in the middle of the terrain, you don't have to worry about them going near anybody, then sure, great, do it. But unfortunately, that plane that just flew overhead, right? If I had been locked on to the tank, it most likely would have switched targets to the plane and screwed up my bomb dropping, which is part of the reason why I don't usually do that. The F-14B does have the good RWR, and so this lets me basically just sit up in space, keep an eye on my RWR to see if there's any AA that spawns up. And you do also get launch warning as well from SAMs, just like the F-16C. So it's not as good as the F-16C for CAS, but if you're just looking for some laser guided bombs, it is definitely a decent option. Just instead of getting six Mavericks and two big laser guided bombs, you get two big laser guided bombs and two small ones, along with only three Sidewinders instead of four. So it is just overall worse than the F-16C Block 50. To be honest, I have no idea why they added the Block 50 so early after the F-14B. It kind of made it obsolete. But I mean, hey, what you gonna do? By the way, if an AA does spawn up and you're worried about contrailing, in case y'all didn't know, if you actually turn off your engines, you stop contrailing. So, I mean, if, if you're up at seven kilometers already anyways, if they haven't spotted you yet, you can always just go ahead and cut your engines off and coast while your bomb's in the way. Especially if you're in the process of targeting the SAM, because then you can just turn your engines back on afterward and not have to worry about the contrail. Tank RB is actually one of the areas that I really wish I had the aim on M for. It's not like a massive difference in Air RB. Like, the IRCCM is very nice, but aim on Ls are still good enough. But in Tank RB, where there's no markers for missiles, the Aim9M is insanely deadly because you just, they don't even see it coming, so they can't flare it half the time. I mean, players are still unaware most of the time, just like this MiG-23 right here. I mean, he has no idea that the missile's in the way. But if he was, then, I mean, the aim 9 l would have been easy one flare for him, and an aim 9 m wouldn't have seen coming in the first place. One last thing before I go, this affects all planes that have TWS and a laser pod, apparently. You can see I was lasing this guy right here and my TWS picks up a plane and it switches my laser targeting point to what my TWS is picking up. So my bomb misses because of that. Just keep in mind that you're gonna wanna switch back away from TWS before you actually go ahead and start guiding any bombs in. In any case, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and I'll catch y'all next time. So, peace y'all.